Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Marvel's Black Widow. First off, I was surprised how much I liked the movie. So let's get that out of the way. I was not really interested. And this happened with a couple of the Marvel movies. So when Captain Marvel was coming out, I wasn't really into it. I'm not a fan of Brie Lawson's off-screen stuff and the way she acted in some things so i had like a little bit of a bias there and at the time i remember going black Nido black widow needs the movie where's the black widow movie and then as the movies went on i actually enjoyed captain marvel not saying that they're great it's a great movie but i enjoyed it so looking at this one coming up i wasn't interested uh it was to me it was like all right it's too late i do like scarlett johansson and tons of stuff i really appreciate her skills i'm not um so familiar with a lot of the other actors but let's start with black widow was directed by kate shortland not familiar to me screenplay by eric pearson story by jack schaefer and ned benson produced by kevin Feige. Now, I'm going through that because I don't recognize anybody here. And this movie had a lot of... Not, um... I don't know, maybe it's a combination of things, but the pandemic, movies closing, things being postponed. This movie got lost in the mix. And as again, it adds to when it was coming out, me going, eh, I don't know, well, you know. So it stars Scarlett Johansson, Florence Pugh, David Harbour, that's the guy from uh, Stranger Things, the sheriff cop guy. So as I'm starting to watch this movie, and like I said, I wasn't going into it with good thoughts, and there's been a lot of things going on recently, but I found myself starting to enjoy it. I don't know why I got this impression of Remo Williams, or The Adventures of Remo Williams, which is an old movie, and it's not that good of a movie, but I think it's got a uh a cult following and i it might be viewed differently now but i love that movie in a way this felt like a souped up pierce bronson james bond movie and i enjoyed it as a matter of fact i didn't do a podcast on shang chi yet but i found the sidekick annoying to me and throughout the movie it started uh, giving less returns. I was like, you know, you enjoy a couple of things here and there. But in this movie, they use this banter sister type thing, and it kind of works. And I was surprised. I'm surprised how much I like the pacing of this movie, the little bit of subterfuge, a little mystery in there, which I saw coming, by the way, but it was good to see. I was actually really enjoying this movie by the end. And some of the things are outlandishly crazy but as they kind of were in the roger moore pierce bronson type james bonds eh, you know i'm not no karate chop on the neck type thing and give it what you will that maybe scarlett jansen doesn't look like she could kill people but it's just um fun i i just found myself having so much fun the plot is a little weird and it, the time might you know, give you a little bit of a uh, confusion if you're not a, like a real Marvel Universe type cinematic universe uh, follower. So it's going before um, the Avengers movie, and it's right after Civil War. So she's um, on the run, and she has to leave because um, they they got the same actor in. Uh, general ross is after her so she goes and there's a little subplot that starts with the sister in i don't know where the fuck <laughs> I'm not sure where the fuck she is and in in a conflict she's exposed to this gas and um chemical and it snaps her out of some kind of fugue state or some kind of brainwashing and you can tell she's stunned, like she doesn't know what goes going on. And the other ones, which you find out, this is a school of black widows um, raised from the red room. And is that plot going on? 
Now, this was in the comic books, and I'm not sure if I... Like, maybe there's someone out there, because people do this way better than me, but have a knowledge of all the movies and go, yeah, they mentioned the Red Room three times, and these are the movies it was mentioned in. I don't have a recollection of that. I do think there might have been hints towards it. So this is a basically a... I can't even say it's an original comic book thing these days, but um, there's a school that raises girls and turns them into black widows and they use a pheromone type thing that controls them now i don't give too many spoilers and plot reveals in most of my things so i'll put a little bit of a spoiler warning here that that's the catalyst of everything so you find out um natasha black widow leaves america um, there's a subplot of another Black Widow who gets exposed to the gas, and you find it all starts to come together with Natasha was raised in a family of Russian spy type people, and they breed these and raise these Black Widows. Now, the chemical thing I think has been done a lot, and most recently, I, if I'm correct, I'm going to go comic book nerd here, is... X-23, who is the clone of Wolverine, the female one, that they use a pheromone that would make her go into a rage and kill the person who was exposed to it. So, like, maybe that's a little recent, but I, I'm, I'm almost guessing DC Comics, it, this probably goes way back, there's some kind of chemical controls them. And as the plot goes on, as I said before, there's banter because these sisters meet up again, um... Natasha Black Widow, because you gotta know, be careful now, because there's Black Widows, uh, lots of them, and I like how they kind of fashioned them after different looks she had in the comic book, which I thought was cool Easter egg. She's been through so many um, changes in the comic books, from classic costumes to new ones to leader of the Avengers. She had like a gray jacket on, which they show. It's been alluded to in the. In the movies anyway there's a banter between them as they get together and realize um you know what's going on and the depth of the family they thought they had which leads to um some really interesting moments in my opinion i mean you see it coming but they have to go and get their old family together who was the sleeper family or the you know the spies uh david harbour and the uh, I forgot the other girl's name from, um, I think she was in, uh, Rachel Weiss. Yeah, I think she's, uh, I don't know, what's the most famous thing? Maybe, you know, me being a nerd, it's just a mummy, but <laughs> she's a good actress. And there's, a uh, little plots that run through. As it builds up to the middle, getting to the third act, I was, again, surprised how much I was enjoying the movie. I don't know why this is one of the ones that got me, but I think there might be something to toning it down. So maybe the best movie Marvel's put out is, is let's say it's Infinity War without a major debate, right? He snaps his fingers, people start disappearing, and fucking everybody's just like an audible gasp. I mean, you know, it's Marvel, it's going to change, but it's just like ballsy, and they really went for it. And, um,. Then you got these Captain Marvel, and you're up in the game. She's like Silver Surfer level, cosmic level power, bursting through ships, and you know, taking on Thanos and things like that throughout the uh, Infinity Saga. It felt refreshing to see this. I mean, it did some crazy stuff in this movie. Don't get me wrong; pieces of fucking shit are flying, are falling through the sky, and they're fighting on them as they're going down. It's you know, crazy stuff. And I think maybe that's why I liked Captain America Winter Soldier so much. It felt so toned down. Now, they won't be my favorite movies, but I think it's a smart move. So I, again, maybe Black Widow was a really smart move when it was planned, when it was going to be executed, and would have fit in perfectly in a rhythm with Captain America Winter Soldier. Like, it would have been one of those down-to-earth things, you know, you get a Hawkeye movie somewhere, I can see that being great now, thinking what they can do. I could see the potential, maybe what they were thinking, but 
again, coming into this movie, I was like, all right, this is too late. I'm not really that interested. And, you know, where's this all going? So you get the third act, and there's some shifty sleight of hand, you know, one of those uh, how, how we fooled you type moments in the movie. And it leads into this villain who you don't even see throughout the movie because Taskmaster, the plot, uh, armored villain who's chasing and doing a lot of the fighting is revealed to be something other than what it seems. And then there's this sleazy guy who uh, runs the organization who Black Widow thinks she killed. So that's part of another subplot is um, she's like, yeah, I killed this guy, you know, so-and-so. And, -and, -so. and uh, Hawkeye was there and they show like flashbacks or stuff and He's like, you know, you're wrong. He's still alive. It shows you how deep this brainwashing and all this manipulation goes. So, in, you know, villains, and when you play in the role playing game and stuff, they have countermeasures, you know, and they're, they're two steps ahead of you. When, when they, heroes come and do something, the villain will have two options or something that you give to make it interesting and so on and so forth. They did a great job with this actor because I wanted to punch him in his face. <laughs> He really comes off as a sleazy fucking villain. Um, and again, this is, to me, really interesting because wasn't in the mood to watch this movie. I can't even step back right now and say it's a good movie critically. Like, I don't know. Uh, I'm an idiot. I like Green Lantern, so what the fuck do I know? But I could say that's a bad movie. Um, the first Suicide Squad. Uh, interesting points, but it's put together. It's a bad movie. The new one I will do a podcast on. Um, I'll get to that another time, but here we are in the third final, um, part of this movie and there's subterfuge and there's a fucking crazy thing that happens. And I just rolled my eyes, but I want to give it away. So there's more spoilers again. Okay. It's not like I'm going to get anybody complaining. So in order to combat these pheromones, there's a gas that can be exposed. You can counteract it. But there's a fail safe that you can't hurt the main guy. So no matter what you do, you can't hurt him. If you off the chemicals, apparently you can't like you can't hurt him. So uh, maybe unless there's this program or something. So maybe something's still working. I, you know, I don't fucking know. These movies are crazy. So when you watch the movie at the end, Black Widow's getting a beating. This guy's beating this shit out of her. By the way, he's not any really medicine looking threat. He's just got this, you know, attitude and older guy. I don't know what his fucking name is an actor, but he like beats the shit out of her and later, like a little bit later, it's she's like, you know, <laughs> because it's revealed that if you break the um set the thing behind you uh top of your nose, bridge of your nose, whatever the fuck it is, and you break that you pinch that nerve or something, you can you can break the programming and that pheromone that is stopping them or whatever from hurting him is negated. So it's kind of revealed that the fight she had with him, she was trying to get him to break her fucking nose thing and he couldn't and she makes fun of him. I found it so funny. But then she smashes her head on the fucking desk to break it on purpose. And now she can go to town and, and hurt him. It was just ridiculousness. But... Again, I like this. I don't know why. <laughs> Something about it is like a throwback to a really insane James Bond movie that I really loved. That I could look back now and go, you know, some of those Roger Moore movies are fucking ridiculous. But he's one of my favorite Bonds, you know, Pierce Bonds. And, and I can understand why people like the new ones and more realistic shit. It's just not for me, fine. Good movies, technically some of them. Whatever. Um, But we are... You know, at the end, crazy fighting, weird reveals, twisty turns and stuff like that. And then there's this ridiculousness. And a sort of um, good balance of highlighting the people in the family, too, I should say. Because I'm already in the third act, but when you're going through the movie and they get back as a family and... It's her, her sister, who had just gotten released by the gas from an agent she killed, so-and-so. They get the father and the mother, and they're, like, pretending family, and the mother's like, I called them on you. 
It, all that stuff was great. I, I really enjoyed it, and I didn't think I was going to. I can't, like I said, I can't even say, like, the way my brain is, like, stepping back and going, you know, maybe if I watch it again and um, put, put myself to the task, I could say whether I believe, you know, it's a, objectively a good movie, if anything. But I'm enjoying everything. And then the father is like Red Guardian. And um, he's trying to tell stories of Captain America. And someone's like, hey, wait, you know, he was a nice. What are you talking about? And just like some really cool things that I thought blended well. And they're part of it to the end in that sense. And it's in crazy stunts. And it's just lots of action that I really found myself enjoying for some reason. And it's like scores of uh women groups around because you're representing the black widow so that was something i didn't think i was going to appreciate like for me um i know she gets a bad rap right now but you you want someone like gina carano these days right i mean you see some exceptional people um who really look like they can fight and i think it's getting more prevalent in the movies it's like saying you know what oh i would rather have um, you know, you make what's her name, uh, She Hulk or Wonder Woman, Gina Carano. You know, what I mean, you could see that happening, but in a sense of like an agent and someone who's gonna fuck you up, I can understand the this doesn't look so believable type stuff. But in the day of MMA, you know, we kind of know a lot more. I think it's been a breakthrough, if not something I like to watch a lot. It's something that, you know, you can understand the respect now that the martial arts industry or whatever has gone through understanding that although you might like Kung Fu and karate and certain aspects of Taekwondo, this and that, they're great for discipline and keeping yourself, you know, on a regimen exercise wise. Cod is, eh, you know, a little bit of research on that is bullshit, but we kind of know now about the grappling and striking and what's important. And I, I see that happening more in the movie, so granted, but she's got to do her twirly thing, and there's a, uh, her pose that her sister makes fun of. And, again, uh, here I am, Marvel's Black Widow, something that should have came out a while ago, hit a lot of nonsense bullshit hurdles along the way, and it is one of the shining lights in the post-pandemic type era, as it did well considering things now before i end this there was a little thing about a lawsuit happening i think they settled it recently and then you know what unlike uh brie lawson scarlett johansson comes across really genuine in some things and i'll just keep a balanced thing like you know what all right they settled whatever um unlike you know that bad feeling you get when that sony deal and spider-man started happening and people like you know Pulling out their dicks and all that bullshit. So I don't know about that. Here we are. Black Widow. I like it a lot. I actually would recommend it. Especially if you're an old school James Bond. The fun gadget crazy stuff. James Bond. A little bit of superhero stuff. And it's tie into the Marvel Universe. is done pretty well. I actually enjoyed seeing some of the tie-ins. The little Easter eggs. And... To see Scarlett Johansson get her moment, I think is she does it extremely well. And and she's somebody I actually follow in other movies that I actually like a lot. Um, so I think that that'll be about where I end this. Uh, again, I want to highlight some of the twist turns in it that I really thought were interesting, but I saw coming. And it kind of makes the movie a nice balance of pacing and what you're going to get. You know, it's uh, family farm stuff with, um, you know, the sarcastic bullshit talking that is highlighted and revealed um, as they're coming to terms of what they actually were as a family, you know. And the youngest one, uh, Natalie, not Natasha's sister, I guess, is was like, no, I actually thought you were my family. I loved you guys. Whereas, I think they hint that Natasha had already been through this. So her original family she was taken from, and she's with this spy family. 
But the youngest sister was so young, she kind of grew into it thinking, so there were some interesting things, a little bit deep. I like some of the emotional pulls here and there. Who fucking knew? And again, I can't, you know, say this is a written well, it's got great this, it's got great that. Just sometimes things come together that you really just enjoy. And I would recommend this. So, Marvel's Black Widow. Give it a shot. Check it out. It's, I don't know, really, uh, really a, surpri- a surprising treat, I think, for me. And I don't know about online. I think I've seen a couple of things. I've been trying to stay away. I think I have seen a couple of things that aren't too, um, you know, glowing about the movie. But, you know. To each his own. In that sense, like I said, if I wanted to do a deep dive and there was lots of interaction with people and we wanted to see, you know, how we we'll judge the writing and whatever, I would still separate that from being what I feel about the movie. So, Black Widow. I really like it. Recommend it. Hope everybody's doing well. Take care. My best to you and yours.